It's not going away, Fifi. And I also burp instead of clap. I'm putting those together. Question. I don't have the question up. <laughs> you should start now, right? and welcome back to our fourth episode of Bruin Banter. We just had a great weekend and we competed for our first ever Black Excellence Meet where we won with a score of 197.025. But this meet honestly was not only a win by points, it was also a win because we contributed to something bigger, to the social movement of Black Lives Matter and this was something really impactful. And now, let me introduce you to a really surprised guest, the Marcella Fraser. I'm honored to have you on the show, girl. Thank you for having me, Bruin Banter, Bruin Banter host of the world, Pula Kalata. I feel really honored to have the mini mic host on the show. So this is going to be a really professional host to host talk. I'm really excited for that. <laughs> But now I kind of want to hear from you as a black student athlete. What does this meet mean to you? And how was it competing all around? Well, this competition has been in the making since June. And with so much attention to detail and seeing it all come together after all of the time that the team spent on educating themselves. And it just, it really means a lot that this was the first black excellence competition that UCLA has ever had. And just knowing that we had the whole team, the whole school, people all over the world backing us up and supporting us, it really did mean the world to me. And competing all around, I mean, I just went into that meet with no nerves, just trusting myself because this meet out of all meets really reminded me that what we do is more important than gymnastics. It's the messages we spread, it's the joy that we spread. And I trusted in my team and I just let go and told myself to do big, beautiful gymnastics and I ended up having a great competition. Yeah, and I think this was fun for all of us, like seeing you thriving in this meet and seeing the whole team thriving because we all want to contribute together to this. So this was really amazing and really emotional, I feel like, for all of us. And now let's get into the meet recap. So we started on vault with a really strong rotation, five out of six stuck balls, and then Nia getting one perfect score, a 995 from one of the judges, and scoring a 9925, and she won the event. Hashtag Black Excellence. Then we moved over to bars, where we kept the party rolling and we scored a team high of 49.55. And then Mars and Nia tied the win with a 995. Hashtag Black Excellence. Moving over to Beam, we also had two scores over 99 with Sakti and Mars killing it again. Hashtag Black Excellence. Moving over to Floor, which was super, super fun. Having Shay scoring a super high score and 9925 and winning the event. Hashtag Black Excellence. And then Mars outstanding on all four events with a career high and an all around score of 39.55, winning the all around. Hashtag Black Excellence. As we already mentioned, I think the whole team was really committed and excited about this meet. Why do you think that this was such an important thing for us? I just think that, well, I know that UCLA, again, is a team that, yes, we do gymnastics, but we are so, so much more multidimensional than just gymnasts. And having this meet and setting the tone and being one of the first to dedicate a gymnastics meet to things like LGBTQ rights, to things like supporting Black Lives Matter. This was extremely important, especially in hard times like now. What the world needs is more love. Yeah, I agree. And I think I would, I definitely want to mention that this was also hard work for us as a team. We started having Zoom meetings already during quarantine and we started talking about the inequality. I have to say it is 
work, it needs education, and me as a white person having those conversations, it felt kind of scary and uncomfortable. But I was just so thankful that I got the opportunity to talk to black student athletes and getting educated and just creating a space where I felt no judgment. And I think this is something also that really contributed to us, like having this meet and feeling so powerful about it. So, Mars, how did you feel about having this challenge, teaching and educating your teammates? Well, I feel like all difficult conversations are pretty scary and I feel like growing up talk about race was very taboo and very uncomfortable and I don't think discussions about race should be rude or political at all and I'm just I'm very proud of this team for having those difficult conversations and for being so open-minded and willing to learn I'm very grateful that all of the things I had to say were acknowledged and absorbed thoroughly. I cannot express enough how beautiful that is to know that this team is just so open to, again, making the world better. Yeah, I agree, and that's definitely something I really value. And how do you personally feel, like, since you're part of UCLA, do you feel something has changed in the way how you feel like you can express your own identity? since you said you never really talked about race and here it's more an open space. Well, I would say that um, at UCLA, there's, there's new clubs forming that really focus on black people in the community, black athletes, black students. I am so proud of myself for being a part of it. And I am so proud of all of the people involved because being a black person at all, you're not going to be able to do anything as extraordinary with some kind of backlash. So the group that I'm a part of that I did help co-found is called um, BSAA, which is the Black Student Athlete Alliance. And we are so thrilled and pumped for the future and for the new freshmen that come in, knowing that they have a group of people that they know look like them, that they know have been through the same things as them. That is just an incredible thing. And um, just knowing that UCLA does provide that space makes me feel very safe. And it does make me feel um, very proud to be going to this school. That's amazing, and it's really cool to see like such a such a strong group of people coming together, working for the same thing. It's really amazing. So jumping back to gymnastics, you've been competing all around, I think, every single meet this season. Like, how are you still alive, first of all? But how did you get so consistent doing all four events, like really stepping it up? I love competing all around. I love all four events. I I feel like my body is it's doing okay because I'm old enough to now separate the mindset of let me do a lot so that it gets better versus let me just dial in on these two turns and then trust myself in the competition knowing that what I did was quality work. So I would say that's how my body's holding up now. I'm also so impressed with your beam, like so pretty, such a performance on the balance beam, always surprising us with some little peace signs, fours up, whatever she has in her pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I gotta keep it at least a little bit exciting. But now even more exciting, just talking about one event, talking about floor, talking about your new routine, talking to Janet Jackson, wow. I have to say, I did watch the interview and I kind of had to laugh because I've never seen you not being able to speak. But this just showed like, how honored you felt to talk to her. But I'm wondering like, what was going on in your mind while you were FaceTime with Janet Jackson? The whole time I was just, I was just really trying to record, record the whole thing in my head so that I could never forget it. The whole experience did not feel real. At all, at all, it still doesn't. It's starting. It's starting to hit me because I wake up in the morning and and I refresh my Twitter and I see um, these news articles about when Miss Jackson called me and I'm like, oh my god, that did happen in real life. And I'm still in shock. I'm still in awe. And honor, honored is the perfect word. 
I had the goal. I just want her to see it. I just want her to see it, and I want her. I want her to like it and think it's good. And she did. She did more than just like the video. I really want her to know how drastic that changed my life in the best way. Yeah, and I'm so happy for you that you that she actually saw that and took all that action because you really do deserve it. And we've seen you working so hard on that floor routine and those crazy dance moves. And I remember she even said like, you did it perfectly. And I was like, oh my God, like that's crazy and insane. That is crazy. Moving on from you performing so great, I also know that you sing a lot. And is there something you could see yourself doing with singing and performing in the future? My dream has always been to be a performer. I've always, always since the beginning wanted to sing, wanted to dance, wanted to be on stage in front of thousands of people. And I'm already doing that performing in front of thousands of people every weekend and I can't see myself doing anything else. You're so good. Like I already see you on TV performing, singing on big stages and I'm gonna be at all of your concerts. You better be at all my concerts or I'm gonna be upset. And now after those good talks, let's move on to the Twitter questions. So first of all, Sydney asks or says, hi Mars. I know how much you love your Janet Jackson routine, as we well all do, but if you had to switch floor routines with anyone on your team, who would you choose? Err. Sakai. Yeah, I love her routine. I think it's my favorite. Ooh, it's your favorite. Can you do it? Do you already memorize it? I feel you know everyone's routine. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -mm -mm. That'd be so fun if we could switch routines for one meet. Why not? That would be so fun. I think we should, for real. Nationals, easy switch. <laughs> Second question is from Isabella, who says, what is it like being so cool? You tell me, because I don't know who you're referring to. You're referring to Mar Mark Zetta? I just, I just vibe. I don't know. People just, people just tell me that, and sometimes I believe them. She thinks that, and I'm sure she's not the only one who thinks you're cool. That's good to know. I need to convince myself that I'm cool. And then I'll believe the people telling me that I'm cool. I do cool things. I'm proud of the things I do. Those things are cool. As far as me being cool, I think I'm a dork. You know what? I am pretty cool. I'll say I'm cool. I'll accept it in this moment. I accept it. Thank you. You're welcome, says Isabella. <laughs> And now, last part and favorite part is the German sentence. Let's see how Marcella is doing. I'm German, so I'm gonna do good. Möchtest du meine Managerin werden, wenn ich eine berühmte Sängerin bin? Gonna start over. Möchtest du? Möchtest du? Meine Managerin werden? Meine Managerin werden? <laughs> Oh my god, Marcetta, you're so good. You are German. <laughs> wenn ich... Wenn ich... Eine berühmte... Eine berühmte... Sängerin bin. Sängerin bin. Okay, oh my god. Also, I feel so honored that you just asked me that because you asked if <laughs> I want to be your manager um, when you're yes. a famous singer. Oh my god, thank you, Mars. I would love to. You just bamboozled me, but yeah, of course I would love that. I already thought that was the deal, P. Okay, deal. P, now you have to say shout out Jersey. Shout out Jersey. Yeah, shout out Jersey. Thank you, I appreciate it. That's a good way to end this episode with you. Thanks again. Like, I felt honored having you in the show. I'm honored to be here. You guys can watch our meet against San Jose State, our last home meet in Pauley Pavilion, which is also our pride meet at 2 p.m. on March 13th. Look and check it out right here. Bye! How do I say bye in German? Tschüss. Tschüss. <laughs> Tschüss. Bye, people over here, too. Love you.